We're going to continue reading the terrible, awful Civil War. So, so far we've learned about the man actually washing, bathing, and drinking the same water they were using. We've heard about um, the beards and how they thought that those were safe and healthy for them. Uh, we've learned about some of the weapons that were used and plunged into the bodies, things that hurt and killed in many of these men. We've even heard about some of the battles that occurred. So let's continue on um, with our reading. Piles of waste. Picture yourself living in a camp with hundreds of men and piles of waste all around. Pretty stinky, huh? During the Civil War, Human and animal waste piled up around army camps, hospitals, and prisons. Keeping clean was an impossible task. Union and Confederate soldiers dug trenches to use as latrines. Hmm. I wonder what a latrine is. Remember, you can use your sticky notes to stop and jot. These stinky dirt pits were often dug close to the camp's water and food supply. Hmm. If the waste wasn't covered with a layer of dirt daily, flies became a serious problem. So it's waste and flies became a problem. Flies feeding on waste brought germs to the camp food supplies. Rain washed the waste into the ground, where it mixed with the water supply. Well, I know before that they were saying there were piles of human and animal waste around it. Hmm, and it's stinky. Think about what waste and would be. And if that is waste, it's like, you know, poo, maybe. Maybe a latrine was like a bathroom? like where they would use the bathroom. Field hospitals were almost as bad as the camps. These temporary hospitals were set up in tobacco storehouses, animal barns, barns, large tents, or even in the open air. Doctors and nurses seldom washed their hands between caring for the wounded men. When they did wash, it was often with water contaminated from nearby latrines. Contaminated, dirty, or unfit for use. So if the doctors washed their hands, they washed it in dirty water and then helped the people who were sick? That sounds like a very terrible situation. We have another primary source here. Civil War Camp 1862, a real photograph. Surrounded by waste. We find about the grounds an area of over three acres encircling the camp as a broad belt on which is deposited an almost perfect layer of human excrement, waste. About as broad as a belt. And it circles the camp. So all around this camp, encircling it was a perfect layer of human waste. This is a san from a sanitary inspector describing Camp Misery, a camp for wounded soldiers in Alexandria, Virginia. Wow, could you imagine the smell? Saw bones. Stop and think, what do you think this pair or this section subtopic may be about? For a Civil War soldier, the field hospital was more dreaded than the battle itself. These temporary hospitals were hastily set up near battlefields. Doctors often had few supplies and little or no clean water. Bare, bloody ground was the only bed for most of the wounded soldiers. Civil War doctors treated soldiers for many illnesses. Diarrhea was the most common and deadly disease. More Civil War soldiers died from diarrhea than were killed in battle. Wow. 
More than 70% of the patients treated had injuries to their arms or legs. Amputation was the most common treatment for wounded soldiers. If remember, amputations from before meant they cut off a leg or an arm. Amputations were done with little or no anesthesia. Anesthesia, a gas or injection that prevents pain during treatments and operations. So they were amputating arms and legs with little or no anesthesia. So nothing to prevent the pain. Seriously wounded men in the field waited for hours, sometimes days for treatment. Doctors stood for hours, sawing through bones. This method of amputation gave Civil War doctors the nickname saw bones. So here's another primary source. It says Union soldiers tend to a wounded man in 1861. Look in his hand. He's got a saw. This is what they would use to cut off the arms and legs of injured soldiers with little or no anesthesia. Nothing to stop the pain. Doctors treating the injured did not know about bacteria and germs. They treated patient after patient without first washing their hands or their instruments. Civil War doctors wore blood-stained coats as they tended to patients. Bloody bandages and sponges used to wash wounds were rinsed out in buckets of dirty water and reused. This is what a surgeon's amputation kit would look like. So why is this section called saw bones? Prison horrors. Life on the battlefield or infield hospitals was horrible, but nothing compared to the horrors suffered by prisoners of war. Men captured in or after a battle were sent to prison camps. Camps were crammed full of prisoners. Sick and healthy men lived together in filthy conditions. Flies, bugs, maggots, and lice lived on the soldiers. Starvation was a daily threat for prisoners. An army that could barely feed its soldiers cared little about feeding enemy prisoners. What food prisoners got was often unfit to eat. Food was simply dumped on the filthy ground. Prisoners fought each other over every scrap. Beds were seldom provided for prisoners. Most men slept outdoors. They had nothing to protect them from the weather. Lack of fresh fruits and vegetables led many war prisoners to get scurvy. Scurvy victims could not chew any solid food. Their gums became black and rotten. Foul fact. Civil War prisoners often caught dogs and rats to eat. This is an image showing men at Civil War prison camps and how they suffered through miserable living conditions. Outnumbered guards feared prison escapes. They allowed only a few inmates to go to the latrines at any one time. Many inmates waited two or more days for the chance to go. Prisoners lived in pools of their own waste. The Confederacy's Andersonville is the most infamous of all Civil War prisons. In all, about 33,000 Union soldiers found themselves in Andersonville at some point during the Civil War. More than 13,000 men died at this camp in Georgia. I remember hearing about Andersonville and Pink and Say. That's the place that they got split up. When they were captured as Union soldiers, they were split up in Andersonville. That was the last time Pink and Ailey 
Saul say. A wooden fence surrounded the camp, but it was almost unneeded. A line around the prison marked the boundary for prisoners. A single finger across this deadline was enough to get a prisoner shot on the spot. But cruel treatment of prisoners was not limited to the Confederates. Camp Douglas in Chicago was considered the North's Andersonville. Hunger and disease plagued inmates here as well. To prevent their escape, prisoners were not allowed to wear clothes. Even blankets were taken from them or taken away. Many Confederates in prison at Camp Douglas froze to death. And again, we have another primary source. This one is from Mike Dougherty, who was a teenage Union soldier in prison at Andersonville in May 1864. A real photograph showing what some of these men look like. I'm going to zoom in on that in just a minute. That's um, prison camp in Andersonville. Disease and despair. There are millions and millions of all kinds of vermin here. Flies, bugs, maggots and lice. Some of them as large as spiders. If they once get the best of you, you are a goner. A great many other prisoners are hopelessly crazy, starvation, disease, and vermin being the cause. I am somewhat crippled myself, but I manage to try and wash and keep clean. That is the principal thing. 100 have died within the last 24 hours. Once you look closely at this image, Share with me what you notice. Look close at those details. Okay, and that'll be our end of our book. We'll take a look at some of the sources that this author has shared with us tomorrow.